Hello everyone, it's week three of the Colour Families prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, and the challenge for this week is complementary colours. Um, so let me just try and explain what that means. Now of course last week we were doing tone on tone, meaning that you were using um, different values of just one colour, for example, you know, different shades of blue like we've got on the colour wheel here, or colours that were next to each other on the colour wheel. Whereas this week um, we're using complementary colours, meaning colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel. So just to give you an example, you might to, uh, choose to do a background in various shades of blue um, and then you might choose to do your focal image in various shades of, of orange or perhaps do a green background and use red as your focal image but you get the general gist. Now I'm going to be using this background here. This is a jelly print that I've pulled off um, a long, long time ago. Um, I usually use deli papers when I'm just trying to um, pull off excess paint from whatever print I'm trying to pull. It's got loads of really interesting um, texture on it, as you can see here. But because it's um, deli paper, we've got quite a few um, transparent areas, which I really like. Um, so I'm also going to use some book paper. Um, I've got um, some Japanese or Korean book paper here. I'm not quite um, sure um, what it is. I'm not too familiar with my um, Oriental um, text, I'm afraid. So, you know, do excuse me if I've got that wrong. But what I'm thinking of doing is just um, trying to use this on my background just because I like the idea of them um, being able to see um, the text underneath. Um, so what I'm going to do is trim um, this down on my paper trimmer. Um, one piece isn't enough to cover the whole of this background. So I'm just going to trim this down. And as soon as I've done that, I'll be straight back. Now I've got a piece of watercolour paper here and what I'm going to do is glue these two pieces of paper down like this. I'm just going to cover the whole of the background um, in glue stick. That will hold that paper down um, fine. Um, as always, focusing on applying plenty of glue um, around the edges as I always do. And so we'll stick this down. I'm focusing on the right hand um, side of the page, as you can um, see, just because if you have a look at my gel print, we've got more translucent um, areas on the right. So we'll pop that down there like that um, as well, just like so. And I'm just going to use a bone folder just to make sure that that's well and truly stuck down. You can see that I've got um, a gap here at the left. That's fine. Um, we can trim the edges. It really, really doesn't matter. I do want to just um, ease this one over, though, um, just, just like that. Let's just lift that up slightly. There we go. Just, just like that. So my book paper is glued down and next I want to apply my gel print um, on top. So again, I'm just going to get a fresh piece of deli paper. Hang on, let's find some. This, this will do. This is parchment paper and apply glue all over the top of the book text. So again, just making sure that we've got plenty all around the um, edges, just, just like this and then carefully sticking um, my print down. Let me just um, do this so that you can um, see it. And I just wanted to make sure that I had white space top and bottom. I'm standing up to do this just so that I can see what um, I'm doing. Now, I think I've used acrylic paints for um, this gel print. It feels like acrylic, um, so that will be really nice to work on. I just think we've got some really fun, interesting, texture on that background and I just love the addition of the text underneath. So again, I'm just going to take this off and trim around the edges. Isn't that just the most beautiful background? I just absolutely love all the detail. How gorgeous. Um, you can see that I've trimmed the white space from around the edges. Now, what I do want to do before I do anything else is just add some stays on ink in olive green. I haven't used it so long, I can barely get the um, lid off. And I'm just going to ink around that just to um, frame it. I think that will add a really nice touch. This will lighten as it dries, although it looks a bit dark at the moment. Um, as I say, it will it will lighten. You all know that um, I go heavy on my borders. I think that just really helps to frame frame the piece, draws my eye to the centre um, anyway. So that's um, that's that. 
So bringing back the colour wheel, you can see that my background here has got a mixture of these three colours here. So let's have a look and see um, what colours are opposite. Um, so we've got red opposite um, the green here. We've got um, orange opposite the blue green. You can see that we've got quite a bit of blue in this as well. We've also got yellow green and opposite the yellow green is purple. So I'm going to try and pull out something in those colour tones. Now I've pulled out this pretty card that I made back in July 2019. Some of you may remember the video. It was a video I shared um, showing you how to um, use Nouveau Drops and dimensional paint. Um, let me just show you the video here just to jog um, your memory. I made four cards in the end and I'll leave the link to this video in the description box below. Um, but I just thought it was such a shame not to do something with um, with this. Um, the other three I must have given away as greetings cards. But what I do want to do is add some watercolour to the background um, of this. So I've pulled out my pretty excellent watercolour palette and the colours I'm going to choose are this um, blue green, this um, yellow green here. Um, I also want to use the um, olive green as well and also um, this um, turquoise which I think um, matches the colours that we've got going on in the background um, here. So I'm going to move that out of the way just so that um, I don't get anything spilt um, on it because you all know how clumsy I am. So let's have a look let's have some of this um yellow green this was just a dish um i got when we were in um vietnam um oh gosh how many years ago was that two years ago seems like a very distant um, memory now is that the right i've done the wrong green haven't i hang on let me just um let me just wipe wipe that off wrong color if we've got a bit of that in the in the background so be it fifth one um along here we go. I'm not concentrating. I'm talking too much. Here we go. There we go. That's that's better. So that um, olive green. Yes, I got this when we were in um, Vietnam and just thought it would be um, perfect for watercolour. And then the um, turquoisey blue as well. Where's that? That's um, this one. This one here. Just a small amount of that. And I do want to water these down um, quite a lot as well. Um, I think before I do anything, I'm just going to rinse out um, my water jar and grab an another one um, as well. We've got some blue um, from the original paint um, I put down in that and that's absolutely um, fine. So I'm just going to water some of this down. I do not want um, any really strong values. I want this to be really light. I'm going to try and go um, around it maybe leaving some white space um, around the edges um, if I can as well. We can add some of this darker value here as well. Let's um, try and get some uh, contrast going on in this but I just think this will make a really really pretty background. Do I want any of that blue? In fact I can pull in some of that colour actually um, that I dragged in as a mistake just to make it look more interesting. You see that's absolutely beautiful isn't it? And I think this will transform this this card from you know being pretty but um a bit on the boring side to being something really really beautiful let's mix um, some of these together as well and i'm working um wet on dry this time rather than wet um on wet let's add some more of that blue down this side this side here that looks so pretty. I really like that. Let's add some of some of this. I'm not overthinking how I'm doing these these colours. I really like that. I do want a bit more of that um, that turquoise though. Let's just try and add a bit bit of that here. And I've got um, a paper towel. In fact, if I pop that um, underneath here, that will catch all of that that's running off here, like um, like so. I think that looks really pretty. Maybe we can have a bit of um, turquoise. Let's grab another paper towel. Here we go. This one here will will do. Let's um, pop one underneath here as well to catch the excess from from that.
You see, I've left no white space, have I? And that's okay. I do want some blue in the bottom left as well, just for a bit of um, added contrast. And I'm just going to set this off to one side now um, to dry. I'm going to add, um, grab another paper towel and just keep removing that from, from the edge. I don't want any of that um, pooling showing showing up. So I'm just going to keep playing around with this until, until I'm happy and then set it off to one side for it to, to dry. There we go. I think that will be that will be fine. Now, whilst I'm waiting for my watercolour background to dry, I thought I'd do something really quickly in this journal here. Does anybody remember me making this? It's got to be three or four years ago. Um, and, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only one. I flit between several different journals and, you know, sometimes they get parked for a couple of years before um, I work in them again. Let me just show you some of the pages that um, I've done in this. Um, they're beautiful. I love this here. Um, just gorgeous. But I did find um, a page. Where's it? Uh, where's it gone? Where I thought I could show you um, this technique with the dimensional paints. Um, so, of course, sticking with that tone on tone um, theme, we've got um, greens um, here, greens and, uh, and blue shades. So I'm going to use one of my dimensional paints. This is the Pin Flare Pearl Wand. And what I'm going to do is just add. I've already um, practiced this on a piece of paper to make sure that I've got no glob bits because again I haven't used my wand um, for a very long time in fact let me just do that like that and then all I'm going to do is just use my little finger here just to drag these paints into the center like like this and it creates a really really pretty um, effect. So this time I've pulled out one of the Dovecraft um, pearl paints. Um, these are the ones that give a kind of uh, Mr Whippy effect. Um, let's again just try this out because I haven't used these in, um, in quite some time. There we go and we'll do the same again. So just five little petals like, like this. Two, three, four and one more. Oh. That should do. We can always uh, go over it um, again if I need to. And using my little finger again, just drag that paint into the um, centre. You see that one's got a bit um, awry. So what I'll do is I'll add a bit more paint. Here we go. And we can um, try that. Try that again. In fact, we can do the same to all of them just to make them a bit more opaque as well. So you can play um, around with this if you don't quite get it um, right first time. But this is just a great way to use up these dimensional paints, I think. Here we go. And the last one. And I find it easier to move my page um, around. And then we need to add um, a centre to the flowers. So I've got some um, orange Nouveau drops here. I'm just going to use that. There we go. Just a drop in the centre. That's just perfect. I've also got some um, green Nouveau drops. Again, I should probably um, just test this out first just to make sure we've got no no globby bits. Let me just um, poke, poke it with a pin. There we are. And then we can make, make some stems. And this is mainly flowers um, in this journal, this journal here. So what I'm going to do is just add bit like this, draw a sketchy um, stem like so. We'll do the same. Same here. And then we can attempt to do some leaves um, as well. Now what I did um, last time was just draw a blob like, like this and again just use my finger Look how pretty that looks. And there we've got um, an instant, really cute page. 
So I just added another leaf on the right hand side of the left hand flower here just for balance and I'm going to have to set this um, aside laid flat like this for several hours um, just because Nouveau drops do take um, a little bit of time to dry um, but isn't that pretty? Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? I'm so happy with how that's um, turned out. Now what I do want to do is add this to my usual scraps journal just because you know it fits um, this theme absolutely perfectly. I'm going to add it to this page here because if you have a look, um, if I try and make some collage out of that, it goes really well with the collage on the other side. I am going to take this um, page out of the um, journal to work on it though. Um, so there we go. Let me just see what we can do with them um, with this. Now the background I'm using is just a piece of um, wallpaper so I want to cover that up and I'm going to use one of my um, eco dyed prints just because tonally the colours are perfect. It will match the um, olive green that's um, in the stem so I'm just going to stick this down. I'm just going to use a glue stick to do that. So I'm just going to apply my glue all over the background directly like so as always focusing um, on the edges just just like this and this will hold that firmly down and then I'll just go over the center as well and then we'll just um, stick that jelly print down oh hang on a second make sure I get it the um, right right way right way up you can see that I've already inked around the edges um, of this as well I just used um, frayed burlap to do that there we go, use my bone folder just to make sure that that's firmly stuck down and I'm just going to trim um, around the edges so I think that's going to be um, fine. There we go. I'm really excited to see um, what this collage looks like so bring back my scissors and I'm just going to trim the excess away. So let's finish this page off. Um, next, I want to add my background. I just love how that looks. Um, now, I've pulled out, I don't know whether you can remember, the um, lemon jelly print page I did a couple of years ago. Um, it's just got this beautiful shine. I have no idea where that's come from, whether I used mica in the background. I've got a feeling that I was using mica sprays, um, but it was so long ago, um, I can't remember. But what I'm thinking is that I can use a piece of this this just to use as um, a mount something like that just to add a bit more interest I did think about um, adding some fabric I'd pulled out a piece of um, olive green um, burlap here but it covers up too much of this gorgeous background here so I don't want to um, use that in this instance so I think I'm going to go for that there which way round do I want this um, piece to go. No, I think I want it um, that way around. I do want to um, ink around the edge of this piece here though. Again, I'm going to use frayed burlap because it's got that grey tone as you can see which um, works really well. It gives it um, kind of an olivey um, hue but um, it will also frame this beautiful piece. I love the effect of that watercolour. Um, that's just absolutely beautiful. So as I've said, I will leave the link to this video here showing how I um, originally made these. Um, but just a great way to use up your dimensional paint that um, I know many of us have sitting in our drawers and barely see the light of day as it is. Right, OK, I think I'm happy with that. Let me just add a bit more ink around the edge of this one here um, as well. And I think I'm just going to glue that down something like um, like that. Isn't that pretty? Now I have used a mixture of glue stick and three um, in one for this um, just because glue stick on its own would um, not be strong enough for this watercolour paper which is quite um, heavy, heavy weight. Let me just um, remove the excess glue just from around the edges like, um, like this. Use a baby wipe. Um, and then I'm just going to use my bone folder just to make sure that that's firmly, firmly stuck down. And before I do anything else, I'm just going to weight this down underneath a heavy book just for a minute or two. I've just stuck my lemon print um, background down just using a glue stick. And this one here has got glue stick and um, three in one. I know that I always harp on about which glue I'm using. And that's because the second that I don't say which glue I'm using, somebody always asks, what glue did you use to stick such a 
and such down. So it's just easier for me to um, tell you as I'm going around, um, along because, you know, sometimes I get asked questions um, years after a video has published. And, you know, I just can't remember what um, I've used. If you end up with a bit of glue um, on something like I have here, just use an eraser. I'm just trying to find my eraser and that will get it get it off here we go just just like this i just love how that page looks and of course now i'm on a roll um i've got another piece of this um lemon paper here and i think i'm going to stick this down to the um left hand side so i'm just going to go off and do that i'll do that with glue stick it doesn't quite fit but i have a plan I've applied glue stick um, over the background instead of on the back of my sheet. So let me just try and get this so that we're even um, top or as even as I can get it. That's going to have to have to do. I would have liked that if I could. In fact, I'm going to take it off because what I'm going to do is try and line this up um, with the with the centre. That's going to bug me otherwise. Come on. Nina. And it will allow me to get it more central as well i have inked around the edges as well in frayed burlap i don't know whether you can um see there we go i can always trim um, this edge here there we are now i've already got um glue at the top and the bottom and so what i thought was that i would apply some of this gorgeous washi tape my lovely friend debbie um sent me this um for my birthday and i just think this will go beautifully so let me just um have a look how much do i do i need it's easier to tear a manageable piece off. Let me just turn this upside down because it's going to be easier to do it um, that way. In fact, what I'll do is I'll add um, a bit more glue just over that edge there as well because as we know, washi stick just doesn't stick down very well at all. And that will cover up that, that gap. Isn't that gorgeous? I can ink around the edge as well. There we go, and we can um, trim trim the excess off and I'll do exactly the same at the top. Don't those backgrounds just look so beautiful together? I'm really happy with that. Now, as far as the focal image is concerned, this is what um, I'm going to use. I haven't got um, a video showing how I made this. It's just a really primitive painting that I made when I was practicing with the Arteza gouache paints when they sent me them to review. Um, it was far too watery. We've got some bleeding here, you know, the colours. I found it really difficult to use these to start off with and ended up doing more of a folk art um, style in the end. I must dig out the gouache and um, paints again um, but it was just too nice to throw away so I kept it now I've just gone off and added some stitching around the outside and I've inked it up with some uh, frayed burlap as well and I'm just going to stick that down like that I think it goes absolutely beautifully with the opposite um, page and so that is my spread done well I'm ready to pop this back into my journal and before anybody asks the reason why I didn't add any watercolor to the background of this one here um two reasons one i like the contrast of the bright white on this um and the watercolor background um here and secondly gouache is water reactive so i didn't want to run the risk of uh, completely spoiling it so let's pop this back in the journal um try and get this in without um creasing and spoiling any of my pages and let's just pull it through from the um, other side here we go and then I'll show you what um, it looks like as a as, as pages together so, so let me show you how the pages sit um, next to each other um, I like the fact that I've got two jelly print um, backgrounds side by side that works really well for me and for anybody who wants to see any of the other pages I've made in this journal you can see that it's getting quite um, thick and chunky now I'll leave the link to the playlist in the description box below let me just check that I'm in um, frame and then the other page is this one this one here so again um, the other side of that um, jelly print um, background. I love that. That's just gorgeous. And of course, the other page I did was this really, really simple one um, here in this journal as well. So we've worked in two journals today. Now, the um, dimensional paint is dry, um, but I'm going to leave this open to set overnight. This has been drying, I don't know, for an, an hour, maybe an hour and a half, um, but it will take quite a while for it to set hard so that, you know, when I close my journal, the, the, the blobs, the uh, little dimensional centres of the flowers don't flatten. Well, I hope you've 
enjoyed this week's video and it's given you some ideas as to how you can interpret the complimentary colours challenge that we've got running in the Facebook group this week. For anybody who's interested in following along, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, in the description box below. So please do feel free to come along and join us. Don't forget to go and check out Kylie's video as well because no doubt she's come up with something completely different um, to me. But if you've enjoyed my video this week, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up as I always say it really does let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing do let me know what you think in the comments below and most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now